Silk is an interactive tool that allows interface designers to quickly sketch a user interface using an electronic pad and stylus. Unlike a paper sketch, this electronic sketch is interactive and can easily be modified. When professional designers first start thinking about an interface, they often sketch rough pictures of the screen layouts on paper or on a whiteboard. The problem with these is that they are static, making them hard to modify and reuse. They are also hard to test with real users and give little feedback about how the interaction will really work. Silk allows designers to quickly sketch an interface. As sketches are drawn, Silk tries to deduce what type of objects are intended. For example, squiggles represent text objects. Other basic objects that can be recognized include rectangles, circles, and lines. Silk combines these basic objects together in order to recognize interface widgets, such as a scroll bar. Silk also recognizes sequences of individual widgets, such as a button panel or the sequence of text labels at the top left of the window in order to recognize a pull-down menu bar. We can also create other types of menus. In this example, the designer will create a tool palette. By switching to decorate mode, Silk will be kept from trying to interpret the palette icons. Silk uses color to indicate the last inferred object. Since the circle and text are both pink, we know Silk has combined them into a higher level object. The Silk control panel displays the name of the widget Silk inferred. Here we see that Silk believes we drew a radio button. We can push the cycle button to try the system's next best guess. In this case, a checkbox panel. An important feature of Silk is that it allows the designer to test an interface in this early sketchy state. The designer alone can test it, or they may bring in participants to do some early user testing. As soon as Silk has recognized a widget, the designer can switch to run mode and test it. Using the look of the widget and the different types of interaction provided, the user can tell the different widgets apart. For example, checkbox panels use X's to show the currently selected item, and the radio buttons highlight the circle, like on a Macintosh. The palette widget highlights the currently selected mode. Using simple gestures, a designer can easily edit the sketch. When the designer holds down the button on the pen, pen strokes are interpreted as editing gestures. The gestures include deleting, cycling inferences, grouping, moving, and copying. Through user testing, we intend to extend and enhance our existing gesture set. Our survey of professional designers shows that they often make written annotations on their sketches. In fact, one article claimed that the annotations are often more useful to the client than the finished interface since they show the reasons given for design decisions. Silk's annotation layer allows annotations on interface sketches. Annotations can be drawn or typed and are saved with the sketch and can later be printed, viewed, or even searched. We will extend Silk to support other history mechanisms so that users can easily compare different designs or even different versions of the same design. Although Silk focuses on the early stages of interface design, it eases the transition to the later stages of development. When the design team has made several iterations on the design and tested it with users, it is time to work with a more finished looking interface. Silk can transform the sketch into a finished interface with a specified look and feel. In this case, the motif look and feel. Just like the sketchy widgets, these finished widgets can also be manipulated. Transforming a sketch into a finished interface with no need for recoding will save a considerable amount of time during the design process. At this point, the designer can use a standard interface builder to add the details, such as the labels, colors, and alignment. Most design tools do little for the designer beyond layout. Silk uses storyboards to allow the designer to graphically specify the sequencing behavior between widgets. In this example, the designer illustrates how to perform rotations. 
The designer draws a rotated rectangle and copies the resulting screen to the storyboard window. The process is repeated until there are three versions of the original screen in the storyboard window. Arrows can be drawn between the rotate button and the next screen in the sequence. These arrows specify which screen should appear when the button is pressed. The screen to start with is selected and copied back to the sketch window. By switching to run mode, the designer can test the interface. Clicking on the rotate button simulates the rotation of the rectangle. The storyboard window highlights the current screen and the widget that caused the last transition. The designer can use this feedback to check that the behavior is working properly. This example illustrates a very simple drawing program. First, the designer shows what should happen when the user clicks on the circle palette item. And then what should happen when the user clicks on the rectangle palette item. Drawing arrows lets Silk know what transitions to make at runtime. An arrow from the button to the initial screen simulates the deleting of the objects. Now the designer tests the behavior. Clicking on the palette item creates the correct object, and clicking on the button deletes the objects. In this example, the designer illustrates how to select an object and rescale it. Selection handles are drawn around the circle, and the screen is copied to the storyboard window. A smaller circle can similarly be created. The selection handles are moved into the proper place and the new screen is copied to the storyboard. An arrow from the circle shows that the user needs to click directly on the circle for the selection handles to appear. An arrow from the scaling button to the next screen illustrates scaling. Switching to run mode allows the designer to test the interface. Clicking on the circle selects it and clicking on the scaling button scales it. We envision a future in which most of the user interface code will be generated by interface designers using sketching tools rather than by programmers writing the code. Since Silk supports the entire interface design cycle, we believe it will enable interface designers to produce better quality interfaces in a shorter amount of time than with current tools.